All right, here's a shot of my little uh, studio space I'll be using to demonstrate this mono printing technique. And so here's what you're going to need. Uh, this, of course, will need a screen and a uh, press, a clamp press. And I've got my screen taped off right now uh, so that I have a rectangle here to work in. Um, I've got a piece of printmaking paper down here. It's an old scrap piece of Reeves BFK taped down. It needs to be taped down on all four sides for this technique so that it can dry back flat. And I've used some blue tape to do that so that I can uh, see where my edges are a little bit easier. Okay, so other materials you're going to need stuff to draw with. You'll need some, maybe some, uh, these are just cheap chalk pastels. Um, this is a uh, little sketch and wash pencil made by General's Charcoal. So it's a, a graphite pencil that breaks down with, uh, with water. Um, all of these materials for this technique are uh, water-based. This is um, some double-ended water-based markers, water-soluble markers. And um, these are very inexpensive. Uh, brand. I also have this brand, the Tombow. I have it on uh, pretty good authority that these are a superior marker set, uh, perhaps giving more pigment out and brighter colors. We'll see. I haven't used them yet. Um, I love these things. These are a Caran d'Ache Neo Color 2 water soluble crayon. Um, these are great in general to mess around with for some watercolor techniques. They're very, very soft and give very bright colors. Um, let's see, my uh, daughter has had at these quite a bit, so I need to uh, replenish my supply, which I'll be doing, but for this purpose, we have enough here to play with. Um, let's see, we've got some uh, set of watercolor pencils here, um, and some very uh, inexpensive tube watercolors. Um, so those are the things that I'll be drawing with. Other things that I'll need, I like to have around a bunch of water for uh, cleanup and, and painting with. Um, always a, a good uh, spray bottle and mister. <coughs> You'll need glycerin uh, to uh, extend the ink, to help the ink extend, and to uh, inhibit it from drying very fast. Uh, transparent base is essential for this technique um, and for cleanup you'll need a good degreaser. My favorite is Greased Lightning. You can pick this up at uh, a True Value or Lowe's, Home Depot, places like that, Walmart. Um, this helps to clean the screen in between layers or after you're all finished. I also like to keep some of uh, this fantastic stuff around bartenders a uh, friend, barkeeper's friend, cleanser uh, for cleaning rough spots and screens and all of that kind of stuff. And as always, you're going to want plenty of shop towels. One thing that I cannot forget to include your needing, of course, is a squeegee. All right, um, more coming up in just a few minutes. Okay, so here we go. This uh, demonstration is a continuing the monoprint screen print technique. And um, so I've got things laid out a little bit here and the first layer drawn. Um, for this, the purpose of this project is to get, um, to get you used to the uh, equipment, uh, specifically the clamp, uh, the screen, squeegee, all the cleaning stuff and the uh, mediums that we'll be using to do this. I'll hit those in a second. Um, the idea is, or the intention is, to create a singular image using the uh, screen printing technique, which is usually used to make multiples, of course. Uh, but this is, uh, we're going to just make one image, three layers, utilizing three colors, um, and seeing how those color layers interact. Um, I call this project um, uh, System A, uh, which will be 
A, followed by a system B, C, D, E, as I, as I go along in my own work. Um, so um, systems art or process art is a way of thinking about art making that emphasizes the step-by-step -step processes or ritual or doing of the work rather than the uh, end product itself. And in that way, it's really good for experimentation and learning. Um, also, the idea is embedded more sort of philosophically uh, in systems theory in general. Um, and I've been thinking a lot about this uh, lately, how uh, the um, world sort of um, economic system and social system has... Uh, created the grounds and conditions for the COVID virus that we're all sort of exper experiencing and dealing with right now. So we as humans have set up a system that's followed through, that's led to certain outcomes within that system. Things happen to us as individuals sort of through chance and randomness. Uh, by chance, some people will perhaps uh, become infected with COVID while others will not. And... Um, it is that chance engagement uh, through this uh, setup system that is really intriguing to me right now. And so uh, in this art project, the idea is that I'm going to set up a system or a set of processes that I'll follow through and see the uh, end result of that, see what happens with that. It's going to be something that I couldn't have planned out, it'll involve a lot of chance and um, randomness and uh, maybe I'll learn a few things along the way. Specifically what I want to learn about is how um, these mediums that I'm using uh, in these watercolor mediums are going to lay over the top of each other and how those indirect color mixing is going to happen. And So um, the system that I've set up uh, is one where I follow these rules, the setup of rules. So what I've done to create this first layer is I have drawn five dots, connected those dots in such a way that I have three distinct shapes. So um, I have a big shape, which is the outer one, a medium shape, which is the red one, and a smaller shape, which is this blue one. Um, five dots, and those dots, I'm thinking about them as individuals in, engaging in some social distancing. So they're set apart from each other in sort of a symbi-random and natural way. Um, I have assigned the colors to each of these by uh, a die roll, and so I've used my Dungeon Master six-sided amazing dice to... Um, through randomness and chance, assign colors to uh, specific areas. Um, I have decided to use a primary color palette because I want to see how these primary colors are going to work together. So I've got red, yellow, and blue. And so um, I've decided that in this randomness, uh, that one, a roll of one or two uh, equals red, a roll of three or four equals blue, a roll of five or six equals yellow. And I have three different mediums here. I have um, watercolor markers, watercolors themselves, and chalk pastels. And so a roll of one or two means chalk pastel, a roll of three or four means marker, and a roll of five or six uh, means watercolors themselves. And so earlier uh, when I was making this, I rolled those uh, out and wrote them down here, so I have the big shape means that it's uh, rolled out as yellow watercolor, medium shape red marker, and the small shape as blue pastel. Um, and uh, I intend to not use the same colors or mediums twice uh, for this process. So that's how I created this first layer. I'm gonna do the same thing on a second and third layers after I print this. I'm gonna show you how to print this right now. So, um, I, as before, I have this all taped out with uh, clear packing tape, uh, the edges. I have 
the um, printmaking paper tape down here. When I painted this out, it came through a little bit. I didn't think about that. I wasn't thinking about that. I'll be more careful about that later. I'm just going to go ahead and print over the top of this um, and see what happens off this first layer. Um, in order to print, um, I need uh, to create a mixture of transparent base and 10% uh, glycerin. And so I'll, I need to mix up a little bit more of that right now. So here we go. Um, grab my big tub of transparent base. I'm eyeballing this. Um, I tend to use a little bit more glycerin than people who live in more humid uh, climates do because I need for the... Um, glycerin is a drying inhibitor, so I need for the transparent base to stay uh, wet longer. So I'll just put a little bit of that in there, guessing at about 10%. Um, use the old uh, plastic spoon from Zoop. I believe this came from Zoop. Stir all of this up really well. And I'm going to lay this out here, a good amount of it, just enough to cover it and flood it. And I'm going to go ahead and flood this. After I flood it, remember to flood, I put my hand in the center of my squeegee. I'm going to let Pat put this at about a 45 degree angle so I get a nice cut along here. And I'm going to sort of, I'm just going to float this medium across the surface of this. And I'm going to let that set here for a couple of minutes so that the medium activates or re-wets the um, water medium. So a few notes on that. Um, I painted this on. The watercolor, of course, needs a lot of time to dry, depending on how humid and, uh, and stuff is. You need to let it dry all the way, though. The uh, chalk pastel, of course, it's not drying, so I could uh, just draw and print that. Um, and the watercolor uh, marker, the Tombow marker, um, is, uh, is dries right away as well. Um, so uh, the different mediums act differently. And one other thing that I've noticed is that different mediums require a different amount of time to become resaturated or remoistened. So if you're using like a watercolor pencil, you need to wait a little longer for the watercolor pencil to um, moisten so that it releases from the screen easier. So a little experimentation there is good as well. Um, I did earlier make this uh, sort of uh, sampler to show you all uh, what the different mediums could look like. Uh, so up here is a general charcoal sketch and wash pencil. This is a graphite pencil that is meant to uh, be used with watercolor or as a watercolor. You can come back in with a brush and move it around. Chalk pastel is pretty vibrant. Uh, this is Caran d'Ache crayons. Um, pretty vibrant as well. I need to resupply that stock, uh, my stock of those, because uh, my daughter loves them as well and she's used them up. Uh, watercolors, of course, look beautiful and, uh, and very vibrant. They mix well. Um, this is the uh, marker, um, and it looks pretty good. I think I would go over it a little bit more if I'm using it, um, and uh, uh, so that it, it was a little bit more saturated. Here's this watercolor pencil here. And you can see I, I, I flooded this whole thing all at once, and that watercolor pencil did not uh, get saturated or get flooded enough, get wet enough to re-release from the screen. So it didn't print as well. I should have let that set a little bit longer uh, to get a, a, an effective transfer of that. Um, but uh, overall, uh, pretty bright and wonderful uh, layer there. Um, so, I think, let's give this a try. Let's see how this 
uh, transfers. So I'm going to go ahead and print this up. Uh, for printing, I'm going to put both of my hands, of course, on my squeegee. Some people will print like this. Depends on how your body likes to work. So give them both a try. The thing that you need to do is to keep equal pressure on both sides. And for this technique, you really need a, quite a lot of pressure. Um, also, for those of you who have screen printing experience, this is, I don't have a, an off contact or a stilt here. Um, this is, I'm printing this on contact. And some people don't even print this uh, in a press or in clamps. Um, but I, I like to, just for this uh, technique that I'm using, I'm layering these up. I want to get them sort of semi uh, lined up again. Anyway, so here we go. You can see in this transparent base that I've got sort of a rainbow of colors as it's picked up. I'm going to save all of this tint base um, in here and use it for other projects later on if I'm tinting darker colors and it doesn't really matter, or grays or whatever. Um, and look at that. So that's a fantastic uh, transfer there. Um, you can see in some of these areas uh, that would maybe residual from the experiments earlier. Um, I splattered a bunch of water on here to get these droplets um, and uh, left things all broken uh, as far as the medium goes there. Um, and so I'm going to clean this up now. I'm going to leave this here, demonstrate good cleanup, um, and then... Uh, go on to the next color. So real quick, um, you want to keep your squeegee clean and in good shape. And so I'm going to uh, save all of this off of the squeegee. Wipe this down real well with some shop towels, a little bit of water. Beautiful. Okay. By putting my tape on the top side of this screen up here, my clear tape here, it helps protect the screen from the, uh, from the medium. It makes this easy, this cleanup a whole lot easier. And so I don't have the chance of those parts of the screen filling up with um, leftover residual medium or ink later on. So it helps for cleanup. I'm going to try and keep that as minimal and as lazy as possible. Okay, so au revoir. I need to clean this out of the screen. And so I've got this uh, little green this scrubby right here and uh, my water. I need to do this before too long. I don't want that uh, tint base drying in the screen or it'll ruin the screen. So I have to rinse all of this out. If I'm thorough, I don't have to take the screen out of the press. I can just clean this right here, front and back. You can see maybe that uh, that chalk pastel is liking to sit in the screen right there. And um, it's being a little bit tenacious. And so I'll gently use this abrasive side of it. See if that gets that up. And uh, not really. And so that's what uh, this is for, the grease lightning. Gently scrub that up, spray that on there. Uh, degrease lightning is a wonderful degreaser. It's going to help clear that out.
looks pretty good. Um, as this uh, is drying, and I can't print wet into wet, I've got to let this fully dry. You can see the paper has wrinkled a little bit, which is why this is taped down. It's going to dry now flat. Um, but as that dries, um, I'm going to uh, get the next layer drawn on here and uh, ready to print that next layer. I'm going to follow the same rules of randomly placing my five dots, creating those three shapes, randomly assigning the color uh, and medium to those shapes, print those over the top and see how they interact. Um, and uh, of course I'll uh, film that as that goes along. Um, I'm also this time going to use a piece of acetate in between these layers so I don't uh, accidentally let something drip through here onto the project. Anyway, um, I'll be back with you after this dries. Alright, so uh, back for layer two. And so, um, let's see, I've got this piece of acetate down here so I don't bleed onto this. This is all nice and flat and dry, uh, thanks to my daughter's uh, hair dryer that I borrowed because um, I am impatient, um, and uh, I have gone ahead and drawn my five sort of randomly placed dots here um, using a sketch and wash pencil, and then I connected all of them together um, to uh, create this sort of trophic interaction. Um, science term that means uh, interaction between a specific set of species, anyway, sort of apropos to this project. Um, and so right now it's time to randomly generate the uh, color and media for the shapes. And so I'm going to roll for the big shape here and roll to one. So the color for the big shape this time is red. Got a big red shape using uh, watercolors. And a medium shape, blue. And using pastel, which leaves yellow marker for the small shape. Um, and so I'm going to grab this um, red watercolor here. I'm going to need more of that, so I'll just lay some of this out right in here. And Grab the brush, a little bit of water in there, cleaner water in there, and let's see, need a big red shape here. So let's decide on this shape up here being the big red shape. We combine all of these together. You can uh, paint or draw on either side of the screen. Some people prefer the other side. Um, I'm doing this so I can see through it. Um, What's interesting to do is if you're laying multiple mediums down onto the uh, screen, you can draw with one thing on one side and a different thing on the other, different color, different medium, and when they are printed together, mushed together, you get different interactions that way too. So that's another little kind of a thing to experiment with. Um, so... Big red shape. My other two shapes have to be different than that. So I've got to make a medium blue pastel shape. And uh, let's see where that medium shape should be. I think this right here. And so, come on, baby. Mm-hmm. 
pieces. Cool. And now a small yellow shape made from marker. And this is as yellow as I have. I'm going to have to work on that to get a better yellow marker for these kinds of things. And I'm going to decide to put that yellow shape right here. Let this dry for a little while, then I'm going to go ahead and print it like last time, clean it up, and um, I'll come back when uh, round three is ready to go. I'll show you what happens. Alright, so level, or layer two, level two, I'm thinking of uh, my daughter's video games. Uh, layer two is dry now, and uh, it's ready to print, and so... I will lay it on. putting any pressure down. I just want a nice glossy flood over the image. I'll let that set for a minute or two and uh, reawaken those water media and um, print it here in a second. All right. Print this and see what it looks like. Remember, equal pressure both sides, lots of pressure for this technique, and rainbowy goo. Clean that up in a second. Just want to see here. It's pretty darn cool. All right. So, um, get a better uh, shot of this in a few minutes, but uh, I'm going to clean this up again, let this dry, go through, do layer three here, and then um, uh, show you what we got. Alright, so I'm ready to print the uh, third and final layer. And uh, what I came up with was a uh, big blue watercolor shape, medium yellow pastel shape, and a small red marker shape. And um, so let's get this printed and see what we come up with. Back in a second. All right, here we go. Sat for a good couple of minutes, so see what it looks like. Let's clean this off. pretty sweet. All right. 
So there's what that looks like in the end. Now there's a couple of things that I would do different next time. Um, first, I would uh, draw the first layer with straight lines and uh, uh, get get so get those all that match. Um, the second thing that I've learned, other things that I've learned, are that the uh, these cheap markers here, I got these from the Hobby and Lobby, um, and in a pinch, I um, was as, being as quick as I could. Those are not anywhere near as uh, flavorful, shall we say, as the Tombow brand. So if you are interested in getting some of these better ones, then these are the ones to get. They um, have a much better pigmentation to them. Um, let's see. Um, other things, I don't know. I know that next time um, I will um, maybe go a little bit bigger and um, maybe find a random way, to, a more random way to generate the placement of my dots, but I think there are some really beautiful things happening that I'll definitely use later in some artwork. Some of these uh, passages in here, uh, those are pretty nice. Uh, the way that the oranges reticulate together um, and uh, those uh, glowing layers look great there. So um, have fun making your own uh, systems and seeing what happens. Uh, catch you on the, on the flip side.